Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you're watching from. Mariam Nabuja, the ladies' guide, your emotional wellness guide. Every Friday morning, teaching you the things that money cannot buy, but which makes life worth living, the emotion. Thank you so much for being our new subscriber, for being our old subscriber, for being the ladies' guide student for quite a long time. It's now two years when this channel has been ex in existence, and uh, we are actually clocking 5,000 uh, subscribers we are just like 90 people to go. So if you're not yet a subscriber, please uh, click on the red button below and join the family of self-awareness. Mariam Nabuja is a counseling psychologist, is a life coach, is an author, is a love doctor, a relationship doctor, very passionate about human affairs, pertaining love matters. I've authored three amazing books, all entitled The Ladies' Guide. Ladies' Guide is a project to elevate all your understanding in matters of emotional wellness. Uh, based on the fact that women, we are emotional, uh, emotional creatures, and if our emotions is, uh, are not stabilized, uh, most of our productivity at the workplaces can actually go down. So uh, Ladies' Guide... Uh, one talks about fulfilling relationships and true happiness. A book that talks about those small little things we overlook when we are in relationship with men. The mistakes women make, the mistakes women overlook, the mistakes we we, we actually uh, make when we are dating with the opposite sex. So that is Ladies Guide 1. And in the book, we talked about why being too nice can never guarantee a committed relationship. How to read a man like a book. When it's time, uh, when, when you tell it's time to end an abusive relationship, you say, I mean, let me uh, stop this relationship. When does that time come in a new life when a relationship is actually not supporting uh, your, your life? And it increases your self-confidence in matters of relating with the opposite sex. Which took us to the next book. Uh, ladies guide to emotional happiness emotional happiness basically talks about uh, how you can stabilize yourself emotionally how you can elevate yourself emotionally by correcting the other mistakes when you read emotional happiness you learn to control yourself in matters of emotions when it comes to relating with the opposite sex single mom's guide the dating navigator how to find love in dicto in the dicto world why texting is killing the evolution of love relationships how to deal with casual relationships how to spot red flags in a narcissistic person partner and how to move on after breakup basically it gives you the emotional healing tools to move uh, on or to move into a new life when actually you've been facing emotional turmoils in your life. So that is emotional happiness, which took us to our last uh, book. This is a series now, because the one that, that the one that is coming soon is now a new series, okay? The Beautiful Man's Life. So uh, the Ladies' Guide Journal is our last book that talks about, uh, it's actually an interactive tool to help you heal. After all those problems you've gone through, then we end with the journal to help you heal within self because I need to remind you when it comes to matters of emotional healing it is your personal responsibility not a therapist okay therapists counselors psychologists psychiatrists we help you realize the problem but when it comes to the decision on how to heal when to heal and the and the personal initiative to take uh, that responsibility that is your work it is not our work so uh, the journal I uh, will teach it deeper how to use it to heal yourself to sleep well to run meaningful relationships, to get out of that, you know, anxiety that love brings when you're in, uh, in any kind of relationship. So those are my three books. Where do you find the books? In Aristoc, Uganda Bookshop, Book Point. Uh, if you're in the diaspora, UAE, we have an ambassador. UK, we have an ambassador. And US, we have an ambassador. And if you're interested in being an ambassador for the book, please, the book sells like a pot cake. So... Every Monday, we give you the seven minutes of inspiration. Please don't miss seven minutes of your time to grow your week, to move with the week. And I usually give it every morning, man, every Monday morning. When you watch that seven minutes, it can grow your now personal development. Okay. Friday is emotional wellness, but Mondays is personal development. With personal development, I mean the little things we shall learn uh, based on the experience I've had, the books I've read, the things I know, the things I've encountered that I'll be sharing with you, my lovely students, to grow your new week. So that is every Monday morning. Please don't miss the seven minutes of inspiration 
with the Ladies' Guide. Then Friday, we shall be having this emotional wellness where we talk about these things that, you know, sweeten the heart, but also hurt the heart. <laughs> Love is a sweet and sour emotion. When you face the sourness, then the sweetness comes. When the sweetness comes, then it's followed by sourness. So we should get used to this kind of arena where love brings that emotional roller coaster of on, off, on, off, on, off. It's part of the love triangle. So just enjoy the rhythm of love and don't give up on loving each other. Yes. Before we get started, um... Proof by Research has a number of products. He is part of our partners the whole of this year. And um, he has what they call rosemary oil. Rosemary oil comes from a plant called rosemary. Rosemary has a lot of health benefits. And when you use it, you get the following benefits. One, rosemary is a brain booster. Rosemary is a higher growth and scalp. Each is scalp, right? Rosemary... Now, this time it's oil, not uh, the, the plant. They make it and they condense it. They value add it into an oil, okay? So rosemary, rosemary oil is, uh, helps you on breast health. Uh, rosemary oil also works on flu, sinuses, and colds. It can be used for visiting. When you're facing infections, women infections are so many, you know, nowadays. With and without, I mean, sexual intercourse. There's a lot of infections from toilets, from I don't know whether it's the heat, I don't know. So rosemary oil can help you put in the bucket and then you steam yourself on a daily basis. It has to be a daily basis. And then it can also be used as a food spice. So you just put five drops of rosemary oil in the water, drink or steam, either we put in the hair for your hair growth and scalp. So rosemary oil is from Proof by Research. How do you get their, their contact? Please look in the description section below to find Proof by Research. And when you go there, please use Betty's Guide as a passcode to get 10% on every product you buy from their shop. As we start. Slow fed in love relationship is what we covered previously last week. We said slow fed, slow fed is a dating term where one person gradually pulls away from the relationship until when the communication is no more. And just to remind you that communication is the lifeblood of every relationship. And without communication, there is no relationship. So when the relationship goes down on communication, most of the time, the relationship itself has lost the oxygen. So slow fed as a form of uh, ghosting in a relationship is a scenario where someone faces that anxiety, that pain, that deeper emotional pain that comes with a pull-away partner where someone has love bombed you, given you all those sweet nothings, and then they leave you hanging. So slow fed is a very important subject because most of the relationship uh, problems you face, most of the emotional pain that you're facing in your life comes from that withdrawal of a partner who you feel you're intertwined emotionally, but then they have pulled away from the relationship. Most importantly, the man. So if you missed the session, please go to the channel, type Mariam Naguja, slow fed relationship, and uh, uh, view what we covered last week. But basically what we covered was, why do people pull away from this relationship? Why do they slow fed you? And among them, we looked at keeping their options open. Most important, the men, they want to keep their options open by pulling away. Every time they are pulling away, <laughs> they are with someone else. <laughs> So it is really painful when you see somebody you've intertwined yourself emotionally. And there is advice, ladies, before you invest yourself emotionally in any relationship, be very sure that this person is actually invested too. Because our emotional self is our engine that drives the woman's life. So be very careful on investing your heart earlier on in the morning of the relationship so that when somebody pulls away, they don't go with your heart. Okay? So we looked at all those reasons. Uh, I request if you missed, please go visit the channel. Type Mariam Nabuja Slow Fed. They will give you all that video and what the reason why men pull away from relationships, leaving you in that slow fed mode. Slow fed meaning it gradually loses interest every day that goes until when the partner totally disappears. Today, 
We are looking at the signs, the telltale signs, the telltale cursors that the relationship is actually fading. Because most of the time, we see the things, we interact with them, we overlook them because we don't want to face the heart earlier on. So as the relationship is slow fading, as these signs are being given away, we ignore them. Then we wait for the big day when the relationship is no more and the complaining begins. Why are we studying slow fading in love relationship? Because it is the foundation as to why you are not happy. You are complaining. You are fighting each other. When someone goes mute, then the whole day you can't even work. Then you call all your friends, family, informing them why he's not speaking, why he's not talking to you. He has not called. He's not picking your text. He's not sending your text. All that comes from slow fading. Okay? So when a relationship is slow fading and you understand the signs, it will help your emotional self to be aware on how to deal with the signs, which will be our end point. Therefore, it's very important to take notice of the health of the relationship every day as a lady. A relationship has a life of its own. It can breathe, it can walk, it can talk, it can die, it can become stale. It is a living thing. So if you ignore the fact that the relationship is going, dying, and etc. every day, it can really, really affect your life when the D-Day comes and somebody has totally ghosted you. So, today we shall be giving you the signs of slow fed in love relationships. So that when you can check, you health check the relationship. You look at the health. Is the, is the relationship actually sick? It will help you to deal with these signs earlier on before you move into the next phase. But before we get started, uh, we have a small announcement to make. Uh, emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is our new topic this month of September. Emotional intelligence is one of the keys on how to still deal with these love fed occurrences because they will always happen in the relationship. Married, single, separated, divorced, you will face this scenario with friends, with anyone. Because as relationships love fed, they affect your emotional wellness. You think a lot. You can spend the whole night thinking about the partner, why they never called you yesterday, why they don't pick your calls. It can actually move you to a level of e uh, and productivity and low productivity because they have ghosted you, because they're not talking to you, and you want to talk to them, you know? And when do you actually talk back? When do you engage them deeper? All those are questions we need to understand when you look at emotional intelligence. So, why do successful relationships fail? That is the question. People come hot and heavy, love bombing you, speaking all those sweet words. You give them all your life, you give them your emotions, your everything, the time. And then the relationship gives you that kind of happiness, the excitement that comes with relating. Then they disappear. <laughs> Why? You know? So most of the time, these relationships suffer what they call loss of emotional intelligence. A relationship has controls. It must have controls, just like any other thing. Power without control is nothing. Even a relationship without control is nothing. No matter how much you love somebody, no matter how you die, we must exercise control. Okay? So many people lack emotional control in relationships. Many people lack emotional intelligence. That's why they throw pictures on social media, uh, display of affection. That's lack of control. They lack control. They can't even believe that someone is theirs. You know? Yet, it has to take a, a bit of emotional intelligence to understand how to control emotions. Because, I mean, relationships are growing, are dying, are, it can become, every day, it changes its angles. So then, emotional intelligence, uh, we shall have four emotional intelligence skills to teach you in that class. One, we shall, we shall teach you self-awareness. We are going to make you aware of who you are. Because most of the time, you don't take the time to study who you are. Many of us don't know who we are. So we enter into these relationships not understanding who we are. And then we become a body to the other party. Number two, we are going to look at the self-control. Yes, what I've said. Self-controlling yourself. Exercising different, different control. There's sexual control. There's power control. There's love control. There's, there's excitement control. You get too excited and then you blow the whole thing. And then you get hurt. 
Then we shall also look at the uh, social awareness. Social awareness where we study the art of dealing with people, conflict prevention and management, reading people's mind when they talk using their body language. Basically, clearing your mental space of any confusion comes with relating with other people. That is social awareness by understanding the social animal called man. Lastly, we shall look at the relationship management. Different aspects of relationships in your life. Something uh, to, 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 to make you understand that all relationships need different kind of management and not to mix up things. How to react to different crises that happen in your relationships. Uh, bottom line, avoiding rash decisions based on emotions when you're dealing with people. No matter how much you love somebody, you hold on when giving those some things. No matter how you feel excited, you hold on before telling the whole world out you guys are in love. And then he's actually joking, you know. So those are the some of the four skills uh, my students are going to learn uh, in our emotional intelligence uh, masterclass. Reminding you that emotional intelligence is more important than your IQ when it comes to life because 80% of your success comes from emotional intelligence, not your IQ. So then, those interested in joining, please, in the comment section below, my number is uh, on WhatsApp. Kindly WhatsApp, and they will give you the criteria on joining the master class and enjoy the moment. Remember, anyone who attends the master class, that is the beginning of your happy life. Conflicts with people is the rise of pain. We don't have enemies. We don't have conflict because we manage conflicts. We prevent them before even they get started. That's what we shall teach you. Maria Naguja, the ladies guide. Signs of a slow fed. Signs that a relationship is actually slow fading. Number one, communication breakdown. Communication totally breaks down. That is obvious. Communication in matters of text, in matters of calls, in matters of when they return a call, in matters of whether they pick or not, in matters of you calling and they don't actually pick the call, you know? So when there is communication breakdown, when your partner no longer calls frequently as they used to call, if they are not texting, then you're texting and they take long to return the text after two days. When you call, they take long to call back after three days. It means the relationship has actually reached a slow fed mode. Talking about phone calls, I don't know whether this will be a topic one time. Let's talk about dating, the phone etiquettes in dating. Who calls first? Should the man call the woman or should the woman call the man? When it comes to relating with the opposite sex, I think ladies should understand that calling a man is against the rules of dating. When a man is pursuing you in the morning of the relationship, let him do the work. That's not your work. So this scenario where I think we see women is emancipation or I don't know whether women have become so confident that they don't even mind setting up dates with the opposite sex. Yes, it can quickly get you a date, but it won't get you a husband. Most of the time we propose to these creatures without us knowing. Phone conversations in the beginning must be very very strictly managed. In fact, don't be 10 minutes, 10 minutes more on a phone conversation with a date you've just met. Why? Because many of the many many of the of the of the ladies abuse the dating season through communication. That's where everything dies. So by the time you reach the other area of um, of now courtship, now you're relating, now you're asking for the serious thing. I mean, the guy gets lazy. You did the job. You have to only do the job. So when you talk about communication in slow fed mode, at times it is the women who create it. It is the ladies who make the men lazy to call them. By you initiating communication all the time, dead end. So the rule is, if he cannot call you, then he is simply not interested. Because a man is a chaser. They love challenges. That is their part. The animal instinct in them does not allow them not to call the woman they love. Impossible. So if he's not calling, if he's not initiating the communication, and you're initiating all the time, you're calling, you're making a follow-up, you're reversing the rules. 
And like I said, it is winning you a debt, a Friday night debt, a Saturday night debt, but you will not get a relationship. So, why do uh, slow fade, I mean, you should go into slow fade mode. The first sign is when communication has broken down. When his messages, his text, I mean his phone calls, no longer coming, and you're the one doing the calls. Number two, your instincts tell you. Your intuition. Every woman has that intuition. When a relationship is not working well, you feel it in the heart. That palpitation. You feel somebody's distant. You feel they're not with you. Even when you're talking, you don't feel them. So the gut feeling inside you warns you that this is now in slip fade mode. Do something. You need to give, to give it some attention. You'll feel it. When you are in that part of a relationship where you feel as if somebody is really far away from you, when you feel they're not close anymore to you, you can't explain it to them, but you feel they're not part of your life. You are in the slow, fed mode. Number three. Hmm. They give you direct answers. Direct, short answers. You send a message. Hey, baby. Are we on this evening? They reply. Sorry. Busy. Busy tonight. Hey, hey, every, 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 every message that comes in is very short. Short. When somebody loves you, when you're in love, you're so detailed, you want to talk on and on <laughs> up to morning. But when somebody's giving you direct short answers, sending you emojis, are you fine? You're tired. Oh, have, okay, have a great night. Fed up. <laughs> they don't have any more words. Short text. In other words, communication riddles down into pleasantries. Someone calls you dear, just not to be rude, but there is no emotional connection. So every time there is direct short answers in form of pleasantries, emojis, the relationship has lost its spark and its flow fading. Number four. You go back to social media interactions. Your communication now goes back to social media if he got you from social media. Let's take a scenario where you found your loved one in a WhatsApp group and I know many of you get them. WhatsApp group says, oh. <laughs> someone finds a WhatsApp group, then they come on the sidebar. When they get on the sidebar, they communicate. Now, when they chuck each other, they keep quiet and they go back to the WhatsApp group. The communication goes back to the WhatsApp group. Hey, hey, Angie, how have you been in the WhatsApp group? <laughs> no more side back, which means it's no longer a private affair. Now we are back where we got you from. Okay? So if social media interactions now have evaded the relationship, you're no longer private now. He has to go to Facebook to like your picture, he has to go to Instagram to send a like or a heart. He has to go to TikTok to send a heart. Yet he actually has your number. They can't contact you. Obviously, the relationship has faded away. So when you find yourself that your social media interaction with your partner is now getting more than your private conversation on the phone, it is a telltale sign that the relationship is now slowly, slowly fading away. And sooner or later, even in the WhatsApp group, you'll keep quiet. Number five, obviously no plans, no more plans, no more plans you make together. You see when a relationship is thriving and healthy and you love each other and you know, you know, he loves you, love him, you plan together. Many things, everything you do, you ask. Anything he does, he asks. Everything you're together, they advise, you advise, you know, life is moving. But when you see that you're alone, you make plans and they're not part of it. Oh, I think we can. We are going to go and see. Uh, maybe my, you see, uh, maybe our. We are going to see my mom, and he's not part of the plans. Oh, you're not part of the plans. It is love fading. It means they are not part of your life. A relationship is life. A shared life is love. Love as a word means I want to share life with you. 
But if you don't have, if you can't do life together, the word love loses meaning. Love as a word means I want to do life with you. Where you go, I will go. What you do, I will do. You have a shared life. But if there is no shared life and then you're planning alone, it means the relationship is no more. As simple as that. Number six, love bombing. It began in love bombing. Love bombing always is followed by slow fed. And it is an early sign in a relationship when you meet somebody who love bombs you. It's an early sign that any time in the future, that thing won't be sustainable. When we relate, and that takes back now to our emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence as an activity is to control yourself when someone comes and with that love bomb, speaking all the things you want to hear, giving you all that tension, giving you all the needless gifts you've never received. And then you're one. Just know that anytime soon, they may not be able to sustain what they're giving you and they're going to hurt you. So love bombing is an attempt to influence the other person, giving them a lot of attention and affection, too much of it that you take their psychology. You occupy their mind. You take over every every bit of themselves. You think about them. You talk about them. You tell your friends about them. It's as if life has just, you know, it's as if something has come to your life and it has caused confusion in form of love. But then, few months down the road, they can't sustain what they gave in the beginning. It's what they call love bomb. In other words, boom! They're giving you love bomb. And then when the bomb comes to you, you digest it and then they disappear. Then you start looking for them. Then you want to, where are you? You want it to continue. That feeling has to continue, but they're nowhere to be seen. That's what they call love bombing. So how do not someone is love bombing? You want, they provide you with needless gifts. They have just seen you and they give you a very big gift, which you you've never even received. Then you say, wow, God has smelled at me. They love bombing you. Number two, um, they lock things up with you. Hey, um, I want to meet your people. Bring your bag. I want to meet your brother. I want to... I mean, it, everything is as fast, 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 fast. Two, a wedding. You really know these people. You don't know them. That's the love bomb. Which means the testosterone rush in this person is the one making the decision whatever you're seeing. But when the testosterone rush disappears and then they come to their senses, they may regret why they married you. So many people get those weddings, wicked weddings, using love bombing. Yes, when you meet somebody you love and you say all these things and then the butterfly and then you're like, wow, this is the person I've been looking for. Pause a bit. Pause a bit. Because I'm telling you the truth, when emotions subside, three months down the road, you may have not, not noticed many things about this person. That's what we call now emotional intelligence. Taking the self-control when you see a beautiful thing, something exciting, and then you hold on a bit. Just as when you're eating the sugar cane, when it's so sweet, and then you even pause a bit and you swallow. But then you don't, you know, you don't just swallow everything because, you know, it is so nice. That's what they call control, love. So then, love bombing is a big telltale sign that sooner or later, you're going in what they call a slow fake mind. Because when this partner withdraws that feeling of affection, you feel empty. You feel lost. You look for them. You want that feeling to come back. You can't even, actually, you can't even replace them. Haven't you met such partners? You meet them. They give you a bomb of love. You look for the person who, gave, who can give you that bomb of love. You can't find any. And then they're irreplaceable. Then you conclude that in life, that was the only person I was meant to be with. No, dear. You love bomb to you. So love bombing is a telltale sign that sooner or later the relationship is going in a slow fed mode. Lastly, uh, extreme anxiety. Extreme anxiety. Before we continue, I need to remind you of a good product which I always thought about, but which I, I actually just stopped. But then I'm realizing nowadays it's one of the things many women are asking me. It's called Vigil. Vigil is a wonderful uh, product for women who need their health, reproductive health. Vigil, uh, based on the fact that there's a lot of infections now, 
there's a lot of infertility, there's a lot of sexual reproductive health problems, which don't even have solutions. You know, when you use uh, those V-washes, they don't give results. We use VGL because it's the only product that goes into the uterus, does the cleaning, and brings up the garbage. In only one day like this, the next day you're like a baby. And no infection uh, shall ever attack you. So it's a product every woman needs. And like I always say, when I use something which works for me, I can I can really tell others about it. So Vigil is a very wonderful product, which uh, which is a dose of only three days, and then you've healed from all UTI infections, uh, all reproductive health problems, many of them. Uh, your golden triangle becomes useful, like a baby, and then every after your menstrual cycle as a woman. You need to use this. You know what happens after the menstrual cycle. Every woman who doesn't clean, you are dirty. Because that place needs rejuvenation. Just like any other body part, it needs rejuvenation. If you don't rejuvenate your body, sooner or later it will go out of service. So, Vigil, if you need it, please inbox me. I'll give you the number. And then you can get a product for yourself. Only three days like this, you are, mm, thank me later. Every time you feel that itching, that bad smell, that bad odor, discharge, you know, after peas, you know, if you have reproduction health, it goes into the uterus and cleans the whole place, brings back the garbage, and then you live a happy life. Not forgetting that your, your cleanliness and your hygiene is part of it. So, a woman is uh, self-care. Number seven, extreme anxiety. Remember, we're talking about the signs, the signs, the telltale signs that you are in a slave fed mode. Anxiety in love relationships uh, is a big sign of a slow fed. What is anxiety in love? That feeling where you don't sleep at night. Actually, you can even get headache. You replay the words he said some time back. You replay the phone call conversation you had. You replay the sweet nothing sweet to you spent some weeks back. You replay, it has become anxiety. Every time you're trying to bring the past sweetness in the present to verify love, you are in love anxiety <laughs> because you're not receiving it now. So you have to bring the past what they said to bring it in the present to make the feeling existent. So anxiety can make you not get headache. It can get you get, get heart palpitations. It makes you become unproductive at the workplace. You get emotional, you know, emotional distress. You can't sleep. This is where many people go around calling friends, discussing their relationship the whole day. Most of the time, are not working in office. They are on computer discussing about love. You see, he said, you see, you, the moment you see that love has occupied you the whole day, talking about the partner, to verify the love, you are in love after that. So therefore, the nervous system is in overdrive every time love is not access to you. So how do you treat love? Is to understand that when you are in a slow fed mode, the relationship is no longer giving that sweetness you wanted. It can create that anxiety in your life. In summary, those are the telltale signs that a relationship is losing its spark and is moving into the slow fed mode. Uh, Silage in Switzerland, before I close down, is a, a nutritional supplement that uh, gives you that health care as a woman to age gracefully. If you need Silage in Switzerland, please go to the description section, get your number, and contact them to get that nutrition. It's a supplement you, you, you take to get more collagen in the body, to get that physical look, to have strong bones, to deal with all back pain, you know, muscle pains, you know, etc. If you are a growing woman. So Sludge and Switches Land is here for you and they tell you one thing, age gracefully. Thank you so much and uh, I think we have come to the end of our session. Uh, how to deal with uh, pull away relationship for my students in the masterclass, emotional intelligence masterclass. We shall not give you the, 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 the points on how to deal with it. If you want to learn how to emotionally control yourself when you're in a fading relationship please join the masterclass the emotional intelligence masterclass where we're going to give you all these skills the social skills to deal with relationships 
to deal with the professional relationships, love, relationships, you know, family, all that. As long as you're dealing with man, you need emotional intelligence to understand how a human being behaves. So how to deal with pull away relationships, we shall cover it in our class in the emotional intelligence. Next week, we shall have a brand new topic, obsession obsessed in love when you love somebody that you get yeah <laughs> you can kill you can do anything you can actually you end up sabotaging the sweetness of the relationship because you are obsessed okay so let's let's look at the obsession in love and how to deal with obsession okay the how to deal with we shall always cover in the emotion because the emotional intelligence is a very long class where it is the point of this channel to emotionally teach you Self-control, self-control when it comes to matters of relating with that opposite sex. So then, if you want to register for the class, like I told you, 772-83-10-57. That's where you can get the registration uh, form. Once again, love you so much and I wish you a wonderful weekend. And if you're in the slow fed mode, please calm down. <laughs> attend the master class and learn when not to call even when you feel the anxiety is killing you okay so because love fade is part of the relationship triangle and it will happen whether you're married or you're single or you're dating okay some point in life a partner will pull away and then you will feel a bit confused at heart once again i'm mario nabuja this guide your emotional wellness guide uh, subscribe the channel in case you find this, this, this video very useful to you. Share this with friends because sharing is caring. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you have enjoyed the session. Love you and bye-bye.